In 2020, the importance of laboratory medicine has never been clearer, and driving forward the field of clinical laboratory science and its application in healthcare is more urgent than ever. That's what AACC is all about, and now, as the 2020 AACC Annual Scientific Meeting and Clinical Lab Expo goes virtual, we are here to cover it all for you on AACC TV. Welcome to AACC TV and welcome to the virtual AACC TV studio, our home for the next five days. From here, we will be bringing you all the most important news and the most exciting stories from the meeting and laboratory medicine all around the world. Today, as the meeting gets underway, we will get straight to what no doubt will be one of the meeting's chief concerns, COVID-19, and the role of point of care testing in managing the pandemic. We will visit Clarity Lab Solutions, discuss pandemic preparedness with Matthew Binnaker, and stop by Singapore's Veritas Laboratories. We'll also look at management of point of care testing with James Nichols and head all around the world to look at the work of LSI Mediance Corporation. First though, you'll want to get to grips with the meeting platform and who better to help you do so than Paul Gennetto, the chair of this year's annual meeting organizing committee. Welcome to AACC's first all virtual annual scientific meeting. My name is Paul Gennetto and I am the chair of the 2020 Annual Meeting Organizing Committee. I am personally excited to log in and learn the latest science from top-notch speakers, abstract presenters, as well as explore the many new products at the Clinical Laboratory Expo. While you're at it, I encourage you to take advantage of the many opportunities to reconnect with friends, colleagues, and even make a few new connections. A great place to start is at our social events on Tuesday and Wednesday evening. At these events, you'll be able to dance your heart out, explore scientific topics with your colleagues, see the non-scientific talents of those in our field, and even participate in an ugly sweater contest. There is a lot to see and do at our virtual meeting. I strongly recommend you take a look at the attendee journey maps that show a clear path to all the meeting has to offer. These useful maps cover all the stimulating scientific sessions, poster abstracts, as well as the many networking opportunities with other attendees, and the full list of exhibitors showcasing the devices and innovations you're looking for. I look forward to what this week will bring and I am excited to see you here. Thanks, Paul. We are excited about what this week will hold too. Now, in the first of our features that take us around the world to take a look at the work done in clinical chemistry, we went to LAX where Clarity Lab Solutions are helping the airport offer COVID-19 testing to travelers. Where most laboratories in the country right now are 72 hour turnaround times are greater. We're able to turn samples around on site in three to four hours with the highest sensitivity, specificity, and overall accuracy possible. My name is EJ Matthews. I live in Las Vegas. I'm on my way to Dubai. I got my test done at LAX airport, so my results will be back and then I'll be ready to travel. The testing solution that we offer here creates a tremendous value to the traveler and also to the airport and to other countries and states. AACC TV is brought to you from inside the 2020 AACC Annual Scientific Meeting and Clinical Lab Expo. Featuring interviews with key speakers and updates about the meeting, we've also traveled the world to bring you insights into the global field of laboratory medicine. You will find us on the virtual meeting platform as well as online and on social media. 
We will bring you a new episode each day of the meeting and make sure to click through for much more from the world of laboratory medicine. As we've seen over the last six months, rapid diagnostic testing is an essential tool in the management of pandemics, whether it's COVID-19 or Ebola. To discuss the ways laboratories can prepare for this and provide the best possible services, I'm joined by Matthew Binnaker. Matthew, thanks so much for joining us today. First things first, how would you describe the initial response to the COVID-19 pandemic? Were labs prepared and how did this evolve over time? Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, it's a great question. So responding to the testing demand for COVID-19 has definitely been something that clinical laboratories have never faced before. It's been a significant challenge and it's taken months to get to the point where most laboratories can meet that demand. During the really early phases of the pandemic, testing was mainly limited to public health labs and a select few large reference laboratories. And then as more commercial tests became developed and approved and available, then testing at smaller community-based hospitals uh, became an option. And from this experience, we've really learned that there's a need to more rapidly distribute testing to as many labs as possible so that we can detect cases early in the pandemic and prevent an infection from gaining a stronghold in our communities. So you will be running a session on pandemic preparedness. Why should people attend? Well, one of the things that COVID-19 has highlighted is that a global pandemic affects all of us. So we should all be interested and we should all be involved in creating solutions for more rapidly and effectively responding to a global health threat like COVID-19. And during this session, we'll be bringing together experts from public health, clinical laboratories to share how these groups responded to the COVID-19 pandemic, what challenges they faced, what they had to overcome, and then how can we learn from the current pandemic to build a framework, a national system that will allow us to rapidly develop and broadly distribute testing to as many labs as possible during the very early stages of an outbreak. Matthew Binnaker discussing pandemic preparedness. It is certainly a topic that is the top of everyone's minds right now. Matthew, thank you for your time today. Thank you, glad to be here. Key lessons there from Matthew Binnaker. Don't miss that session. Now with more on the pandemic, let's go to Singapore where government reacted quickly and early to the growing pandemic, playing a key role in this response with Singapore's own Veritas Laboratories. Veritas Laboratories committed to coming up with faster, more efficient, and more robust tests. providing our testing capabilities at air, land, and sea checkpoints. We are committed to bring high quality products to our customers globally. Care testing is an important role and a challenging one that laboratory medicine fulfills, and as such, it's important we follow best practice guidelines. To talk through his session, Management of Point of Care Testing and AACC Academy Laboratory Medicine Best Practice Guideline, I'm joined by James Nichols. James, thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you. What's the role of AACC in ensuring best practice in point of care testing? And why is the AACC Academy guidance document on point of care testing important? Sure. So there is a need for establishing an evidence-based practice for point of care. Point of care is an increasingly popular means of delivering laboratory testing. When it's used appropriately, point of care can improve patient outcome by providing a faster result shorter time frame to therapeutic intervention. But when it's overused, as like any other test, incorrectly performed, point-of-care testing presents patient harm. 
So the value of point of care really needs to be demonstrated through well-designed trials, uh, research published in the peer literature, and that is exactly what the AACC Academy's goals are with this guidance document. What are some of the key take-home messages from the guidance document? Yeah, there are some interesting uh, take-homes. One of them is that an in interdisciplinary committee is essential for successful point-of-care program. Getting everyone who's involved in the process engaged in the committee and in point-of-care testing is important to hear their point of view. Um, another take-home is that oversight of a point-of-care program should be provided by individuals with experience in clinical laboratory sciences, so the laboratory, and those that are involved in quality management. Most importantly, uh, we recommend participation in proficiency testing or external quality assessment for all tests and locations where point-of-care is conducted. And finally today, why should people join your session on this? I think they should join because they're going to hear the latest evidence uh, supporting good best practices for point of care testing. And most importantly, they can discuss with their colleagues some of their challenges and hear how others are addressing management of point of care testing to get improved outcomes. So it'll be a worthwhile session and we hope to see everyone there. All right, James Nichols, thanks so much for your time today. Appreciate it. Well, thank you. Now, after hearing about AACC guidelines on point of care testing, let's see it in practice. Time to take a rapid trip from Japan to China, Germany, and the USA. LSI Mediance Corporation's system is being used all around the globe. The main mission of LSI Mediance Corporation is using medical science to help create a society where everyone can be healthy and fulfilled. Our company motto is Good Health Creator Medical Science. For point of care settings, devices were chosen based on ease of use, but clinical sensitivity was quite often compromised, leading to false negatives in the diagnosis of MI. We wanted to develop a cardiac analyzer which provides lab quality results with a short turnaround time at point of care settings. PASFAS is a benchtop immunoanalyzer used in both core laboratory and POC settings for the measurement of cardiac markers such as troponin I, CKMB, myoglobin, and anti-proBNP. That is it for our first show here at the all-virtual AACC Annual Scientific Meeting and Clinical Lab Expo, but the meeting has barely started. Tomorrow we talk innovation, informatics, and disruptive technology as we return to get much more of the very latest in laboratory medicine. We'll see you then.